Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me for the Wild Nun Cut podcast. I am live at the Wild Sheep Foundation convention in Reno, Nevada with the beautiful Jana Waller from Skullbound TV. I paid her to say that. (laughs) It's a fact. Like, this woman is a dynamite all the way around, like, inside, outside. Um, I can really say that you're just such an extraordinary person. And I really believe that that comes through in your episodes as well. Oh, thank And that's you why so people much. love you so much because we all feel like we get to connect with you. Oh, that's so sweet of you. You and I have been such good friends for years. And, you know, it's funny. Um, in this industry, it can be a little challenging. And I've just chosen to surround myself with the most positive, yeah. amazing, strong women. And, and you are right there in my small little pod. And uh, I love you for it. So thank you for having me. Well, I love it that we can all lift each other up and yeah. support each other and, you know, encourage each other. And I mean, the world is really competitive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, and that's how we all succeed is, you know, <clears throat> are striving to be our best. Right. But what I love about this community, especially of women in in our industry is that we we compete with ourselves and not with each other Absolutely. and we embrace what each other's doing and we're supporting each other and I've always felt that sisterhood with you guys and um, with you and I did a podcast yesterday with Rachel Attila and you know she's coming out with a new YouTube channel so we're like I'm trying to get with every awesome woman I can find and just talk about what you're doing well because that's how that's how we all succeed it's really how the world works you know the whole movie and book the secret that's how it works the more positive energy and support you put out there that's exactly what comes back at you i have completely found that to be true and that's why we all root each other on and we're rooting each other on wearing really awesome (laughs) denim today so we don't normally you guys listening only you don't know what we're wearing but we are in this uh, denim and diamonds theme for the ladies lunch today so we i I busted out some massively retro um, stuff that actually I owned already, so I don't really know what that says about me. (laughs) Well, what it's sad about me is I still own the stuff that I wore in the 80s in high school. So, you know. And the awesome thing is is it still fits you. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. That's (laughs) an accomplishment. Well, the jacket, anyway. (laughs) (laughs) If you still have clothes from when you were in high school, you're not doing so bad in life, okay? (laughs) True, true. (laughs) I mean, that freshman 15, like, totally escaped you and then well beyond. So that's, that's great. It's come and gone. It's come and gone. But no, I love going back to like what you're talking about, the energy you put out. And you're such a spiritual person. Um... In, and it really comes through on your episodes, the connections you have with people, the emotional healing that yeah. you really represent, especially with everything you're doing with your veterans now. You're getting ready to launch an all-veteran season on Carbon TV this year. I am. I'm so excited. So I was nine years on the Sportsman's Channel, and now I'm launching season four on Carbon TV. And now I'm strictly digital on Carbon. And I am, uh, more than any of the other episodes I've ever aired, so many people come up to me or write me and say, I love your veteran shows. Like, I loved that show watching that hero climb the mountain with no legs. And those kind of stories I feel like right now are so important Mm -hmm. to see. We need patriotism stories. We need stories of heroes. We need stories of solid men and women who have really sacrificed for this country. So I'm so excited to put them all in the last, these have all been filmed in the last, you know, 11, 12 years, all in one season, all together. People can go in and watch them and share them. And I'm just super excited. Every single hunt is already in the can. Um, Almost all of them have been out. A couple of them have never been seen before, but to put them all in one place, I've been thinking about doing this for years and it's super, I'm super excited that it's here. Launching, actually, I might launch tomorrow. Ooh. Ooh, Yeah. So by the time you guys all listen to this podcast, you can go on Carbon TV and 
watch these episodes. Yeah, I'm kicking it off. I'm going to do one one a month. There'll be one month that has two because I'm doing 13. Mm -hmm. But I'm kicking it off with the episode that started it all for me. And that is Bo Richenbeck. He's a double amputee Navy SEAL from Montana. We took him on his first elk hunt. He really didn't hunt much as a kid. His dad used to hunt as a young man, but gave it up to tote Bo all around because he was really into hockey in junior high and high school. Really dedicated to hockey. And so to be able to have Bo come climb the mountains of Montana at Northern Rockies Outfitters, mm -hmm. which you and I have both been at yes. before. And uh, to be able to be there with Bo and his dad. And it was such an incredible week. It was eight days. And it really spurred me to say, I want to do this at least once a year to try mm -hmm. to get out uh, a disabled combat veteran, share their story, share the mountains or the water with them. And in that sharing, it's so healing, not just for them, but for me and all the viewers. Mm -hmm. And I feel like uh, uh, that their stories are so critically important, but to tell their stories through a hunt is just sort of a different way to do it. And uh, I'm excited to share it. Well, and not only that, so I, I really believe that the mountain in all of us, regardless of ability, um, lets us know what we're truly capable of. Yeah. And so a lot of times we think, oh my gosh, I could <clears throat> never do that or I can't, how will I get there? It's, the task seems so daunting or I have this limitation. And it really is, is so empowering how much your body can do if your mind is right. Yeah, amen. It really is. And like, I personally feel, like you said, spirituality and energy-wise, that being outdoors is so healing in and of itself mm -hmm. for our physical bodies, but even more so mentally. Mm -hmm. And then when you are pushing yourself through challenges, whether it's weather, it's cold out, mm -hmm. whether it's climbing up a mountain, whether it's... Um, mood sometimes we're just not in the mood or don't have the energy yeah. or whatever and you push yourself through all those challenges and then you absolute then you are actually able to notch that tag it's i don't know anything else that really delivers that spectrum of emotion i know people say well what about athletics yeah, I maybe I don't know. I've not been on that level of. Uh, yeah, you me know. neither. I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Clearly you know, built for comfort. <laughs> yeah, and you know most uh, most not a lot. A lot of athletics are team, mm -hmm. um, whereas hunting isn't a team. It's individual. And but I feel like it delivers the um, you know the challenges, the patience that we need. Yeah. The the sadness of taking an animal's life. That's a part of it. That I, I think all of us feel that way. We feel gratitude for that life, but sadness, elation because we did it. The spectrum of emotions that hunting delivers. I don't think anything else does. And then you add on top of that these combat veterans who are really battling some physical challenges. Mm -hmm. It's just pure emotion. Yeah, it is, and it is for the viewers. So when I watch your shows. You are um, the most raw and transparent person. <laughs> and I love that about you because I, you know, for example, this year you got kicked out of the less than one club. Yeah. You harvested, you were able to draw a tag in Montana and you harvested a sheep and we'll talk about that. But your emotions, um, I, that's what I love about you. I'm there with you and I'm like, I feel what you're feeling just by the expression in your face. And that is so powerful for viewers, I think, and people to really feel like we connect with you, we know you through your experience. And, and you're so great about bringing that um, to the world, which is why I love your show. But um, your sheep tag, I mean, we're at sheep show. <sighs> yeah. And you're now a sheep hunter. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy because I always used to joke, hashtag too cheap for sheep. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because I've been coming to the Sheep Foundation for years and like it is, you know, it is a coveted hunt. And, Absolutely. Yeah. But I've always been putting in for Montana and some other states. And with the thanks to Robert Hanneman of The Hunt and Fool, he comes at me every year. He said, OK, it's time to put in. You know, where are we at? How are you feeling? Do you want? I remember him specifically last year. We we're talking sheep and he said, do you want Missouri River breaks? Like, you know, big rams, low odds. And I said, no, I want I want the opportunity. Yeah. And he goes, well, better, best odds are going to be down in Unit 250 in Montana. And, and uh, sure enough, when I was with Heath, I was actually with Heath, my producer, and we're driving, we run baits, bear baits in Idaho together. He said, I want to run into the gas station. Hey, results are out. Go check your results. He comes back out of the gas station. I'm screaming. I'm like, Heath, Heath. Yeah. <laughs> it says, does this say successful? I'm reading successful. Am I reading this right? Like, could not believe it. I was so freaked out. 
And, I um, hope he took his iPhone out and like videoed you screaming. Yeah, I, ah! in I the did, car. <laughs> I did do a video in the car right after like, that, yeah. like in the truck of like, I can't believe this is happening. Yes. I literally felt my whole body on pins and needles, like I was su- super jacked. And uh, and then we started talking about how we want to film it and where are we going to scout. And I started scouting in August. I'd never, I've never been in that unit in yeah. Montana, and only it's only an hour and a half from my house. And yet I've never been in it. I've hunted 270 right next to it, but never 250 for any species. And so it was learning a brand new unit. I wanted to do it myself. And uh, so, of course, I picked the brains of people who knew that unit. I talked to Remy Warren. I've talked to uh, Robert Hanneman and other hunters who've been successful in that Mm -hmm. unit and kind of all had the same thing to say. Like, don't worry about October. Whatever you see, you see. But November is going to be awesome. They all come out of the wilderness. That's when they start rutting. Yep, start rutting. And it was absolutely the opposite for me this year. It was just a crazy year for sheep. A lot of sheep hunters I talked to said the same thing. But in my unit, the sheep were gone in November, just gone. They disappeared. And it was crazy. I counted, we saw 41 in October. Not a I, ram you wanted to harvest though. Not, no ram. No, I, I had the tag that was, I had to take a three quarter curl or better. Okay. The other two tag holders could take either sex, any, any sheep. Mm-hmm. And so I did not see a mature ram in all of October out of the 41, only one lamb, two young rams and the rest were used but i was still excited i thought november we're gonna i I know where the girls are i'm gonna find the boys you know yeah and so um john was able to hunt with me the first four days uh we saw those 41 um he came back mid-november hunted another three and a half days with me we saw one sheep it was a young collared ram who had a broken back leg but he got along got around great mm-hmm. we saw him the next day three and a half miles from where we saw so him. he wasn't he oh. was he was he was mountaineering so yeah. he was doing he good. was mountaineering now yeah. right he was looking for the ladies yeah. and uh so was i and uh neither one of us could find them <laughs> but <laughs> but um i went five or six days without seeing any sheep which was just crazy and and, and i'm sure like you know the mental aspect of that you know you're out there this is a once in a lifetime opportunity right and the days are are counting down you're yes. not getting more days at the end you know and in yeah. the pressure you start feeling the pressure and and i'm sure that mentally kind of weird on you what what did you do to like stay in the game i just told myself i was going to go down there every single day yeah you know and i was just, just not quit nope not quit and i knew it was just a possibility tried to stay positive um, there's, a, a there was a moment where Heath's dad was in town from Philadelphia and he, I said, go spend the day with your dad. They went over into the unit next to mine where mm-hmm. everybody always sees the sheep on the highway. Mm-hmm. There they were, all the rams rutting like crazy. Mm-hmm. That's in the middle of my, um, Heath put together a beautiful five minute clip. And in the middle of that, you'll see some incredible ram footage. That's mm-hmm. all from the unit next to mine. And he's mm-hmm. like, they're all out over there. I actually think a lot of the sheep went over into that unit. Yeah. It's not that far. And and, um, but I, they were acting like sheep, doing the doing their sheep thing in that unit. We couldn't find a mine, and uh, was just staying positive. Went out a couple of days by myself and just got on all the high points and glassed and glassed mm-hmm. and glassed. Um, but it just came down to on day 13. Um, it was a day Heath and I said we're just gonna hike all day long and see what we see. And we act that was the first day I saw a legal ram mm-hmm. with a U, two ridges over, and we said let's go for it. And we just hiked all the way over, got over there, couldn't find him, and all of a sudden he said over there and across the big bowl that we were on saw them duck over the ridge we gathered up our gear ran around and they just disappeared and there was no snow that day so it was the low of the hunt was day 13 Mm -hmm. for me day 14 a huge blizzard blew in couldn't see very far never saw any sheep day 15 we drive into my favorite spot I look up and there's a ram looking down about 300 yards up on the edge of the cliff and he popped over. We pulled the truck over, got our gear on and say, we're going to get, we got snow. We can chase them all day long. And we climbed up to the top, probably took us 40 minutes to get to the top of this. It was super steep ridge and he was gone, but we just got on his tracks. We had a good foot of snow Mm -hmm. and followed him. And that ram was by himself. I'm sure bird dogging, looking for the ladies, but we could, could not catch up. Well, okay. I'm sorry, but you're in a foot of snow and no offense to like us being humans <laughs> but humans trudging through a foot of snow are not catching up to a ram that is 
wanting to breathe yeah. and he's on the move. Like, no offense to you and your capability or yeah. anything like that, yeah. but it's like chasing after elk. <laughs> You're not catching them. Don't try to chase them. Yeah. Like, good luck getting we in front of them. We were just so excited to have the snow, yeah. but yeah, it was, and you know, you can read so much in the yeah. snow and we did come across a couple other sets. Didn't know if they were his or not really, mm-hmm. but um, anyway, we gave up after probably three miles, worked our way back down to the truck, ended up in the, in the afternoon, we got out of the truck and we were glass on the back side of the mountain yeah. that we were on in the morning. He spotted a ram popping over again. So we just decided to let's go back to the saddle where we cut off, where we saw the tracks. Yeah. We know he crossed. Maybe he's just cut. You'll get circles. lucky. Yeah. Yep. That's really what it was about. Yeah. And we climbed up there and um, we had one hour of light and I had walked away from my rifle you know, we always say we're never going to do that. Don't ever drop your pack. Don't ever walk away from your rifle. But Heath's got to, I know I got to have it on film. Yeah. So like I said, I'm going to pop over and check the back side of this saddle. So I walked away from my pack and my gun and I'm glassing, glassing, glassing. And I hear Heath psst, psst, and he points up and I look up and there's a ram oh, staring down gosh. at me and I'm 40 yards away from, from my gun. rifle. And he's on his camera and he's, he's, Pete's probably about another 30 yards away from that. And I just ducked down and the ram was kind of looking all over and he looked down and you know, if that were an elk or a mule deer, you and I know we would not move. Like Mm-mm. you ain't moving until his head goes behind a yeah, tree. Yeah, he's gone. And he was yeah. just staring and looking around and I whispered to Heath, should I go for it? And he said, go for it. And I ran back over to my gun and got positioned he starts walking down kind of towards us in our direction and luckily he, he's dumb at this point because yeah. he wants to breed he's, he's got like, girls mm, on the my he's got girls in the brain yeah so yeah yeah it's more forgiving it's really a blessing <laughs> exactly thank god for men being dumb sometimes yeah. no offense guys <laughs> just i was totally punning there exactly <laughs> exactly though. and he was 140 yards and uh, made the shot he ran over we watched his legs go up in the air and it was It was truly, I'm going to cry again. It was truly, um, in my 30 years of big game hunting, what I call the pinnacle. It Mm -hmm. it really was. Like, just the fact that it had taken that long, you know, including the two days of scouting, 17 days, and that we did it ourselves, and I was there with Heath. I I wish John was there to share in it with me, but every day he was, you know, what would you see? How'd it go? Mm -hmm. You know, we did kind of pull a little trick on him. We, um... We were just but, elated. But this was the day before the season ended. No, I actually had it three more days, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, it wasn't but still, you're four more down days, maybe. to the wire. Oh, yeah. It's... And there were men, multiple days that all of us, because we were uh, um, champ and... Um, Cletus had the other two tags, super great guys. We were all sharing information. Yeah. What'd you see? We'd bump into each other, you know, and because it's such a timbered unit, there are only certain spots you can kind of hunt, you yeah. know, you can get out and hike a bit, but, um, we were, they were great guys and they ended up thankfully taking, taking out the last weekend yeah. too. But, um, it was crazy. We're driving back to, it was about an hour and a half away from my house. We're driving back. We finally get service. And I was so excited to call John, my boyfriend, and uh, I said, I, I said, he, I'm the worst liar on the planet, but I said, I'm going to try to pull it off with him. So he, he's like, how'd it go? I'm like, babe, we hiked so far today. And I start kind of getting him all like, oh, we were beat down and uh, exhausted. And I told him the story about the morning of climbing up and losing mm-hmm. the ram and everything. And finally, after about two minutes, I said, but we got him. No, you <laughs> did He's like, you're like He's dragging like, him through the mud. I did. <laughs> He's like, you stinker. You know? But it was so exciting. And uh, it truly was the, the pinnacle of my big game my journey as a hunter for big Mm -hmm. game. And it was exciting to share that here Wednesday night at Sheep Show. Hey guys, Christy Titus here. Because I don't have the opportunity to get out on the ground to scout some of my non-resident hunting unit draws, I'm at home doing some e-scouting. Using Onyx Hunt lets me prepare for my upcoming hunts this fall right from my computer. And now you have access to 3D features and functions that are found within the app right on your desktop. Using Onyx Hunt to help you e-scout ahead of time means that when you hit the ground this hunting season, you'll have a better lay of the land so you can spend your time hunting and not trying to figure out where to go. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor and download Onyx Hunt and try it today. 
sheep hunting is is one of you know I think is one of the most raw forms of hunting. Yeah. Um, it it takes you to your knees. It takes you to the brink. It takes you to your limits. And it's again this most mentally rewarding one of the most mentally rewarding experiences I think because at the end of it you you look around and you're like. I did that. Yeah. And um, they're such a remarkable animal. And, and just being able to have the privilege of hunting them and having that, it is, I'm so thankful. And the fact that you're part of the sheep family here, yeah. and it, it really is a family. If, if you guys really that are is. listening haven't been here before to this event, it is, it is like a family reunion. I get teary eyed walking in the room and I see people. But once you, you know, you, there, what I love about the sheep family is that it's not just, a bunch of people that are really wealthy that can be sheep hunters whenever they want in this room. You have all these people that get just as much out of it, guiding, wrangling, cooking. It's a family and when someone's successful, it's your success. And, and there are the people out there that once in a while we get lucky yeah. and we draw it. And, and when you have that feeling of I'm a sheep hunter, it's really a life changing feeling. It is. It is especially drawing the tag in my home state. Yeah. And it's, I've, I've only ever had that feeling of this is it. And that's when I drew an amazing Alaska moose tag. Mm-hmm. And when we were on that hunt, I remember just feeling like I'll, probably never be back here again Mm -hmm. not in this area i might hunt moose again Mm -hmm. and i may hunt sheep again yeah but i'm never going to be back here it's a once in a lifetime tag and i felt that way in montana with my sheep tag this is probably it even Mm -hmm. though we it does happen once in a while where someone can draw in montana you have to wait seven years odds are pretty slim but it's that moment it's that feeling of this is it give Mm -hmm. it your all and when it all comes to fruition like it did like it was such a blessing like heath was crying my cameraman and it would to be able to share that with him and it it it's still it i i don't know how i will top that Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you don't have to no i mean this can be its own (laughs) extraordinary memory you also found with your boyfriend john not only did you get your ram but you found a deadhead there as well i did a deadhead of a lifetime and for anyone who is i'm a, a skull artist that's why yeah. my show is called skull, skull Bound chronicles um i love skulls like you know and that goes all the way back to my wisconsin days of my dad's cabin sat on a on two main highways and mm-hmm. so we'd find road kills all the time it was so exciting and uh so i jana always... gets excited over finding roadkill her roommate does too she, she... takes them home and processes them i don't eat the roadkill but my roommate's dog does yeah <laughs> anyway so jana gets excited about finding roadkill we knew this is new okay yeah skulls let me re- skulls let me rephrase Jana's like there's a raccoon stop yeah. the car. as long as it's a skull i'm all about it just kidding Sorry. but we fought so we we're driving along and this is that three and a half day period where we didn't see any sheep but that mm-hmm. one young ram so we're driving we're putting a lot of road miles on because we're trying to get to the high points and glass okay mm-hmm. nothing there we're going over to that next mountain and we're going to glass there mm-hmm. and so we were driving along i'm looking out the moon roof of my truck trying to see if i can see any sheep straight up cliff and i say oh stop 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 I, I think i see a moose paddle and it is what i thought i initially saw because it was the upside down yeah. ram skull with the white curvature and it was like you know 200 yards up the steep ridge and and john slowly slowed down and he gave me that look and he said you want me to back up and i said yeah in that voice of course yeah, <laughs> yeah, you want me to back up and uh so I we back up we back up and typically when i say oh stop i think i see an elk shed or ooh, mm-hmm. ooh, Maybe a white tail shed. It never is. You yeah, know, it never is. It's a stick. Always, 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 always. So, but I can't. You have to look. Yeah, Otherwise, you it have haunts to. you all yeah. day long. So he backs up. We get out. I look with my binos. I say, I need the spotter. We get the spotter out of the truck. We look. I look, and I'm I'm pretty sure it's an upside down. But I I don't want to jinx it. John takes one look and goes, "That's 100% a ram skull." I said, "You're giving it 100%. Let's go." So we started running. If we could up the hill. Heath's got the camera rolling the whole time, so it was so fun because it was live and on the fly mm-hmm. and real. And we walk up to this beautiful skull. Sheets weren't around, but it was you could tell it was a big mature mm-hmm. ram and and pretty good shape, a little chewed on the nose, but looked like probably from the previous winter. Yeah. And we split up and it was, I go right, Heath goes left, John goes up and it was probably two steps and I hear John, look what I see. Yeah. And I scream and we run over there and then I saw the second sheath. And so to have this beautiful deadhead and as 
uh, you know, as sad as it was that this ram was killed, probably by a mountain lion, we have tons of lions in that area, probably by a mountain lion, um, it was sad to find him, but to be able to honor him. Yeah. And in 2019, Montana, Montana changed the, the ruling that you could pick up ram skulls, you just have to take it into fish and game, pay mm -hmm. a small fee and have it plugged. It was so great because I am having that deadhead um, I, so I'm shoulder mounting my ram on a beautiful wooden pedestal. The deadhead will be in the in inside the pedestal with oh, lights on wow. it, and then it'll be a shoulder mount on top. And uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty special. It is special. It's yeah. a it's a tremendous story, and it really like goes back to the spiritual thing. Like your whole um, series is around your your artwork with skulls, and yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, that's a little cryptic that aren't in the hunting world, but we know the importance and the value of that, and for you to find that, really, hold on, I'm going to sneeze, maybe not, <coughs> bless you, excuse me, for you to find that really is like, to me, it's very spiritual, and it's it's not a Oh, it's God. You know, that to me, I'm like, okay, that's God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God gave that to Janet. I feel the same yeah. way. <laughs> I really right. do. I do. I think that's a God moment. That's what I call them. Yeah. And uh, finding something special like that. The only other, I, I would equate, the only other moment I had like that <clears throat> being on a hunt and finding something so special. I found the most beautiful obsidian spear tip mm -hmm. on an archery elk hunt in Oregon. And that was just amazing yeah. to find that. And to I contacted a bunch of my friends who are really into artifacts and arrowheads and both dated it around 6,000 years old. And, mm -hmm. you know, to think what hunter was here and mm -hmm. who made this. I, I equate finding that deadhead to something like that mm -hmm. where it's like almost worth the hunt yeah. alone. Yeah. I found one. Uh, well, I found a few out in the world, but I found one a couple of years ago in the Steens. And it was so weird because I'm just walking along and I'm like, you know, it's a God thing. You need to look at the ground. You need to be looking at the ground. And, and I don't know why, but I had this thought and I looked down and I was looking around and the next thing you know, there's an arrowhead. Uh. And it was like this premonition, yeah. you know, and I really feel like, and I tell this to my husband all the time, but you know, my subconscious all the time, I feel like is God having a conversation with me. And, and in that moment I was like, yeah, that's okay. I need to look down at the ground. I'm going to look, oh wow. There, you know, that's so, I <laughs> there's an arrowhead. I have a moment like that too. I, I do a lot of, like you, like you say, talking to God when I'm out in the woods mm -hmm. and when I'm hiking or shed hunting, same thing. I was in Wisconsin by myself hunting, walking for sheds, you know, it was springtime. It was beautiful out. Um, just having a conversation and I always pray to say please today help open up my eyes and my ears to see your beauty where I may not have otherwise noticed. I'm going to cry because this is totally how it happened to where I may not have otherwise noticed it mm -hmm. just as I got done saying that I stepped over a log and I almost stepped on a fawn and it was so beautiful to me it was mm -hmm. another God moment mm -hmm. and it was just you know that the, the tap on the shoulder mm -hmm. that says, I'm here, I'm listening, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And you had a really um, remarkable hunt in Wisconsin a couple of years ago. That yeah, was a major God moment. Uh, yeah. That's another one. Tell that story really quick okay. because that one, um, you know, you're just out there by yourself doing what you love and in your dad's tree stand. and Yeah. Well, it was so special. In fact, it's on my Instagram highlights because I was just there by myself. So I had my cell phone. I was doing a bunch of selfie stuff. And it was so special for a couple of reasons. I was going through uh, the beginning of a breakup, you know, um, which breakups are hard. You know, I had 10 yeah. years with my ex and I'm very open about that and, and um, you know, trying to focus on the positives, but still pretty trying to figure out my life. And he was my business partner in my show. So do I continue on? All that, just emotion. And my dad, it was the last weekend I would ever hunt my dad's cabin because he sold it. He just, my dad's turning 80 this year. He wasn't getting up there as much as he didn't mm -hmm. even, he didn't even get up there one time during the archery hunt. And mm -hmm. so he was excited to finally have a buyer, but it was a, it was, it was a sad weekend for me. Uh, also a happy weekend in the fact that I had so much gratitude. I was trying to soak it all in <clears throat> and it was the Wisconsin rifle, opening rifle. Wisconsin's deer hunt is only starts on a Saturday, only goes to the following Sunday. So yeah. it's a short, but we only typically hunt the opening weekend. And so I'm, I went out Friday night to check my tree stand. I decided to sit in this old rickety gun stand, big box blind that was built 
the previous owner built it probably 40 years ago. Yeah. I mean, that thing needs to be condemned. And it was a good thing I Jen is like, it's a good idea for me to climb in this yeah. thing. It's well, totally I, safe. <laughs> it was good a thing I went out Friday and checked it because the door was literally warped shut. Mm -hmm. That you know, holes in the roof, windows all broken out. I had to football punch my way, my football drill my way through the door, but got it open, left it open for Saturday morning, but still wanted to sit there. Well, I, start, I sit there, it's, and it's such a beautiful morning. The sun is beaming down. There's crystals on every, all the trees. It's just mm -hmm. beautiful. And as I sat there, I laughed because I, I didn't have, I didn't really have time to plan. It wasn't trimmed out. I could see one little lane through the woods and one little lane over here. And it was, if I was spending more time at my dad's cabin, I would have brushed it yeah. out more. I would have cleaned out the leaves from the tree stand. You know, it just, I would have done it different, but I was still so happy to be there. It was probably an hour or two into the hunt and I see movement down the one little lane through the trees. So I, I put up my binos, I see a doe pop out and right behind her was a beautiful buck. The kind where you just look and you know it's a shooter. Yeah. I wasn't sure what it was. I just knew he had some junk going on. And uh, I saw him for two seconds, that's it. They went through the woods and they were going kind of in the opposite direction of me, maybe over towards Allie, who's a friend of my, a daughter of my dad's friend that I've hunted up there since she was 12. And she's in her mid twenties now. And I thought to myself, oh, I hope that buck goes towards Allie. Mm -hmm. And it was probably five more five minutes later, you know, my adrenaline had calmed down a little bit and I hear ch -ch -ch -ch, and I look out the window and there he is. He is literally underneath my tree stand. He's about to walk underneath it and pass and I couldn't even get my gun low enough. Mm -mm. And so I stepped up off my chair and got behind it and got down, let that buck walk out. He literally grazed the staircase up to that's how close he was. And he walked out and um he was about 30 yards. I grunted, stopped him, shot. I saw him kick and he runs. And I'm, I take out my cell phone. And I'm like, I think I just shot a great buck. And now at my dad's, I do have to say, he doesn't, it's, the, it's different than a lot of places in Wisconsin. He has no trail cameras, no food plots. It's basically, we all spread out. We sit in the woods. It's old fashioned hunting. Mm -hmm. And even on the way up there, my dad laughed that his grandpa used to say, nothing ruins a good deer camp like someone getting a deer down. Because <laughs> <laughs> then the work begins. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. It's over. more about the fish fry and the beer. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I was, so like I would say that I've shot a lot of nice whitetails out there, a lot of nice bucks in the 130s and 140s. I think the biggest buck anyone's ever shot off there would be my Uncle Bill took a nice 150s with his bow. Mm -hmm. But you know, on 120, 130, no one passes yeah, that up you're, there. You're... It's kind of, it's a, if it's brown, it's down. The rule at my dad's is if you shoot it, you mounted. But a lot of my dad's buddies have mounted basket racks. <laughs> 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 We're just happy to be there. Yes, and have, you exactly. Know, That's it's not a the lot, point. It's what it used to be, you know, yeah. up there. It's not necessarily how everyone wants a big buck, but it's about in the moment. If you see antlers, it's going down kind yeah. of thing. Everybody says they're not going to, but they do every year. But anyway, so I, I'm not sure what I shot, but I, I knew he was a good buck. It, it, I was just elated. I gave it about a half hour. I get down. I see great blood right where I saw him kick and I walk a little bit and literally 20, 30 yards, there he is. And he turned out to be the one of the, yeah, is he the nice? Yeah, I think score wise, he's the nicest buck I've ever shot. He is a 16 pointer. He is with only a 12 inch spread. So mind you, real tight racked. He scored 169 and seven eighths. Wow. Yeah, so that's a big whitey with no spread, yeah. you know? And he just, just had- Just massive deer. Just massive, Old. just so beautiful. Um, I was honored to be on the cover of Rack Magazine mm -hmm. with that. But to me, it was a spiritual God moment. Mm -hmm. It was like he was tapping me on the shoulder and saying, you got this, mm -hmm. you know? I hadn't hunted by myself up there in 10 years because I always had my ex, a, mm -hmm. a camera with me. And and you were by yourself, no camera, yep. just in an old deer stand you decided to crawl into for the last time. Yep. And yep. what a great way to close the chapter of, uh, of yeah. that experience in your family's history there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really was. I did a video where the next day I was just sitting in what we call the mud room where it's, you walk in, you kick off your boots, everybody has their gear laying around. And, and every year my dad puts a collage together of the pictures of, you know, people's hunts. And there was 20 years there of all these photos. And I just couldn't believe that I, I was sitting in that room for the last time, that I had just taken that beautiful buck to be able to share that with my dad and my, some of my family mm -hmm. and friends. And it was just, it was truly one of the most special weekends I've mm -hmm. ever had. But it was like, it was so cute. I was at SHOT Show a month later, 
talking with my friend Brandon Lilly, mm-hmm. and I was explaining. He's like, "Tell me the story." So I was explaining to him the story. I'm going to cry right now because it's so emotional for me. But he, I, I said, Brandon, Brandon, it was like a God moment. I felt God. I said, I looked around, and the woods were. I was holding that buck by myself. Everyone else was still in the tree stands. And the woods were orange. They were mm-hmm. like lit up so beautiful. And it it was just an amazing moment. And Brandon said to me, did you ever think that possibly you were the one lighting up those woods? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, man. Right? Yeah, it was such a beautiful conversation. But yeah, there are moments like that that I would not experience without hunting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you being my sister in, no. in the woods, like you get it. Well, you get it. We- Training or planking at the range is both empowering and fun. What I love about the Ruger LCP2 is that it is chambered in 22 long rifle, which is perfect for skill development and training. Plus it's available in 380, making it a great choice for personal protection. As a safe, responsible citizen, join me in being a proud Ruger American. So you talked about, well, you know, with the sheep hunt being the pinnacle of your hunting career, how do I top that? And it's, to me, I'm looking at it like, well, how do you top your whitetail story? Yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of hunting is we're not trying to top anything. We're just trying to take everything in. Yeah. And, and life is so much about having all of these remarkable experiences and small journeys. And I mean, the thing for me, I look at when I'm old and I'm, you know, laying in bed and... I want to look through my photo album and my memories. Yeah. Oh, I could cry thinking about that too. <laughs> Holy smokes, Jana. Thanks for making me all emotional. You're welcome. But I mean, you don't take things with you. You right. know, um, you get to live a life. And I think the last couple of years, if anything, has taught me, um, and I think a lot of the world, the value of wide open spaces and wild mm. places and being out and freedom is fleeting. And Amen. as much as people have fought for our freedom, we've all experienced um, a loss of freedom that's been very profound for everyone, a loss of our businesses, a loss of our way of lives, and, and things have changed so much, and it's we feel totally powerless. Mm-hmm. And, and one thing that really, I think, brings us back into this life is worth fighting for and living for is is being in wild places and you know my husband and I made the pact that we're not going to stop traveling we're not going to stop living we're going to travel and go to the places that welcome freedom and welcome life and we're going to we're going to embrace those opportunities because you never know if tomorrow you can right you know your dad's 80 my dad's getting older as well and I'm trying to get him to slow down and do more hunting with me and we did an elk hunt this year and neither one of us got elk um we had some bad luck some bad you know everybody has that's elk hunting (laughs) yeah um but it was one of the best weeks of my dad's life hunting and just to see the excitement that he had made it totally I mean, that's what it's all about. Amen. That's what it's totally about. Yep. And um, I think it's so important for more women to get involved with hunting because as we know, if a woman does it, the family does it. And um, empowering other ladies to get out and have these moments in the field, whether you're by yourself or with your with whether you're with your dad or your husband or whoever, um, these are life-changing moments that uh, they bring a power and, an, and they bring a feeling of accomplishment and they connect us with the people that we're with for our whole life. Absolutely. Like that feeling never diminishes. No, and in the crazy world that we live in today, like the chaos and what's going on politically and socially and culturally, um, I feel like when I'm in the mountain, for me anyway, when I'm in the mountains or even on the water, and out there, and the, those, the river is still flowing. You know, mm-hmm. the breeze is still blowing through the leaves. And it makes you realize that all that chaos, um, it doesn't have to affect you. It doesn't yeah. have to get you down. It doesn't have to, dr- you can, to me, I just feel so much more myself and so much more connected to what life is about yeah. when I'm in those wild places that oh, you talked about. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I can't, I mean, one thing I was so thankful for is that I have, a wild space at my house yeah my heart breaks for the kids that don't uh-huh. you know that's this last couple of years is like there's so many kids out there that are living in 
urban environments, locked in tiny apartments. And it's really, as a woman, made me want to be a crusader to go out there. And, you know, there's a lot of kids that don't have anybody in their families that hunt or have the opportunity to learn these things. And how can we be better stewards to the next generation mm-hmm. to introduce them and have those opportunities? Because I know how important they are. And I my heart breaks for the kids that don't that don't have that parent or mentor to do it. And so um, there's a lot of really awesome groups out there, like First Hunt Foundation is one of them. Um, And they're taking a lot of kids out. I just did a huge donation. I sent them all of my old gear. I'm like, here's all my old gear, take it and give it to these kids to help them on their first hunts yeah um so and great. they are their chapters are growing around the country and it's a really good organization and i also did the wyoming women's antelope hunt this year which uh-huh. you have been a big supporter of as well it is an amazing program um i think every single state could copy that program Absolutely. in some form or fashion even if it's if they don't have big game like wyoming has so many antelope yeah that, that it just works really well the ranchers all get involved it's public land it's private land but even if it's duck hunting or bass fishing yeah. or something they could take a look at that in their program and how they do it and they they do that in three days they have banquets they raise money and that just cycles year to year but what it's doing is half of the hunters there have never been hunting before yeah and it's it's amazing i would love to see every state copy that program. oh it's an incredible program the gal that teed it off she's like you know this this weekend might change your life i'm not going to set the standard too high da, da, da. well after i left i'm like i'm moving to wyoming <laughs> yeah. yeah talk <laughs> about like, changing your I'm life i'm leaving oregon and i'm going to wyoming because these are my people and this is where i need to be right um, but it is you know these um these outreach organizations or groups you know there's so many incredible places um and it, just being involved is so important the the women hunt program here at wild sheep foundation they took 12 women to ftw ranch in texas where they learned you know some hunting skills they learned about firearms shooting positions field and dressing field dressing cooking, g- cooking game man, uh, game processing and then they actually went hunting yeah and um that was a fun um i was a, kind of a sponsor of that last year and that was a really fun thing to be part of i had two women send me hand written notes following Mm -hmm. that event telling me how profound it was for their life and I think um, as women it's and and men even you know getting more people into our community and um, into the woods and in whether you're fishing or hiking or whatever it is if hunting's not for you that's fine it doesn't have to be but there's a lot of incredible experiences to be lived out there. That's why it's so important too to be a member of groups like Wild Sheep Foundation, Mule Deer Foundation, SFW, whatever it is If you don't have the time to maybe mentor or get other people involved, you 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 can write a check, and that's what these groups are doing. There's so many amazing programs Mm -hmm. within the conservation groups that are fighting for Mm -hmm. saving our heritage. Whether it's kids programs, women's programs, like they really do. That is their mission, and it's actually a mission of a lot of the hunting companies. They donate to these organizations Mm -hmm. because they know that they're going to take care of it. They're going to run the programs, but I, I I just all the time preach to get involved, whether mm-hmm. it's going to a local banquet, buying a membership, going to a local banquet, maybe you have some artwork or jewelry to donate, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, you are an amazing uh, a role model with the ju- your jewelry line that you donate all the time. I see you left and right. You're constantly I donating try. to all yeah. the banquets. Well, and, so are you. Well, I'm yeah, trying to. With your to. artwork, yes. It, it's hard. I'm never home anymore to do skulls, but it's hard. But we both have tried really hard to raise good money because yeah. we know it's going to a good cause. It's just, pr- it's literally saving our hunting heritage. Mm-hmm. It is. It absolutely is. And mm-hmm. and also, you know, there's a lot of great companies that are investing. And, and some of that is like my partners for, for my podcast, shameless plug here. Um, I'm very fortunate to work with some some great people that help make this possible. Dead Downwind is one of them. And you ladies out there that are listening, I want to invite you to try the new formula of the Dead Downwind shampoo. Ooh. Because it's a lot better for your hair than it used to be. So <laughs> um, if you're looking for scent elimination products, always check out dead down when it's an enzyme based technology that is real science behind it and um, odor destroying enzymes that actually kill bacteria and smells and so the dead down when new shampoo formula is super awesome so check it out they actually have a full skincare line of lotions and everything Ooh, they do toothpaste to all of it out. they've got it all so um and it, they're they're really working hard they're super involved in the industry um 
it's a company, you know, they are always contributing to everything I do. Last year I did a, a hunt giveaway winner, which actually was a, was a veteran that um, won that. And um, so I'm very thankful for all the people. And that's, that's what you really want to do is pay attention to who's uh-huh. supporting what you guys are, are behind and get involved in, in, you know, there's, I believe in a power of the purse and what you buy reflects your values and who you spend your money on and with, um, in everything that we do, it really is important, which is why I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Though. It is I'm so glad true. You I that. Yeah. yeah, the power of the purse. It really is true. Mm-hmm. The back companies that back what we believe. In. That's that's right. Yeah. yeah, and and really support. I mean, we're both with Cryptech, yep. and we both know it's a veteran-owned and founded company, and they do so much for our military personnel Mm -hmm. not only that but for women hunting you know they've got a great women's clothing line that i am proud every time i put on my cryptic clothes i mean i feel like i belong to something that really matters and it's meaningful and they've got a great lineup of gear for women like if you guys have not tried their clothing um they do a great job yeah they do i've literally you you two have worn it in every single condition I yeah. actually switched over to them when I was on an Alaska hunt. This is right when they started, so it was perfect timing, but I was drenched in the line that I was wearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, you know, just gear now, the technology behind gear has come so yeah. far. And, uh, yeah, Cryptek really does cater to the women, partly because, too, their wives and their daughters That's hunt. That's right. And so they want them warm and mm-hmm. comfortable. And if mm-hmm. you're warm and comfortable, you can hunt all day long. Yeah. And you can just push yourself more. Mm-hmm. But um, And they're hardcore. They hunt in pretty some pretty tough conditions. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's great gear. I'm, I'm very proud to be with them as well. Well, I'm just glad that we're all on the same team. And yeah. <laughs> we get, <laughs> Makes we it get, easier, we get an opportunity. It? I would, I, mean, I want to invite everybody to check out what you're doing. Where can people find you? They can find Skullbone Chronicles on Carbon TV, mm-hmm. right where you, which I yeah. love so much that you came Yay! over to the network this year. We're all on year. Carbon, yes. Yeah, it's so awesome. Isn't it nice to be able to, and, and you know, I have to do say, Sportsman's Channel was a great home for me yes. for nine years. They're great people. It was a great home. It was a little frustrating for me when um, people would want to, oh, I saw your picture. Where can I watch that show kind of thing? You can't. No. Because it aired. Because it aired. Or you could try to catch it in three months. It's so nice to be on a free digital platform mm-hmm. where it doesn't cost any, it'll Absolutely. never cost they'll never they they have vowed to never switch to a pay to play mm-hmm. program or or platform um so skullbone chronicles is right on carbon tv you can download the free app on your phone mm-hmm. if you are like me and want to watch it on your big screen tv you can uh, get carbon tv through your roku stick mm-hmm. your fire stick if you have a samsung tv that's 2017 or newer um you can load it right under your yeah. menu and every, it seems like every month they're adding new ways to watch it. Mm-hmm. And of course, if you have a smartphone, cast it to your smart TV. But they can find, um, I do believe, hopefully, knock on wood, that um, everything will be good to go and I get to launch my new season tomorrow. That's, yeah. Um, uh, kicking it off with Bo Rich and Beck. But uh, they can watch the other three seasons anytime, anywhere, share them. And- the great thing I want everybody to think about for Carbon is I have all also been digital, completely Facebook and, and YouTube. And the censorship that I'm getting on those networks, um, and again, this goes back to the power of the purse or where you spend your time and money, yep. is I'm trying to pull away from some of those platforms that don't believe in our lifestyle and our hunting heritage and really put an emphasis on supporting the people that support us. And Carbon TV lives, breathes, and loves hunting and wild places. And they want us on their network. They're doing it for free. They're providing a home. They're not censoring us. They're not asking me to eliminate grip and grins or kill shots the way other platforms are demonetizing or de- yep. or restricting you. I'm losing followers on Facebook now instead of gaining them every year how does my platform shrink annually it doesn't even make sense but those platforms are really trying to get rid of us yep. and get rid of the culture and carbon tv is embracing us so i invite you all please do check out carbon tv if you're not already watching um, if for nothing else than just to support those that support us amen i love it and your social media how oh. can people find you on social media yeah um skullbone chronicles on instagram and facebook actually i might still be on skullbone i don't know skullbone you just type in skullbone and you'll find and you'll me find you Anna. you'll find yeah. me and i run all my own social media it's me if you send me a message it'll be me I try to respond to every single message that I get and um, but yeah I'm on Facebook Instagram and Twitter 
Yeah, perfect. So you guys, thank you so much for joining us at the Wild Sheep Foundation. We're at Sheep Week in Reno, Nevada. And uh, we got a ladies lunch to go kick off and drink some uh, cocktails or not, uh, yeah. whatever you want to do. But I'm probably going to have a mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> I got to rock this bling, uh, right? if make, you know what I mean. Make it worth packing all the extras <laughs> that I normally wouldn't. That's <laughs> right. So we'll see you all on the next episode of Wild and Uncut. Thank you all for joining me and Miss Jana Waller. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.